My name is Manuel Guariguata. I'm principal scientist on forest management and restoration, working for the Center for International Forestry Research, C4, headquartered in Indonesia. However, I'm based in Lima, Peru, and I coordinate C4's activities for the Latin American region. And I'll be talking today on how we should, or at least how we should look at uh, ways of connecting local with global aspirations in the context of forest landscape restoration. Uh, we are calling these uh, participatory monitoring, uh, which involves, of course, as the name suggests, the involvement of diverse stakeholders, which more often than not have conflicting interests or else opposing interests. So the issue of participatory monitoring in the context of forest landscape restoration is critical because it's always a negotiated process and it cuts across scales from the global to the local. Why participatory? Uh, there are a few reasons that are uh, shown in this slide. Uh, as time goes by, uh, it's really easy to quantify deforestation. Uh, we can quantify deforestation almost on real time uh, via remote sensing. And also we can also we can also do that for reforestation. Uh, I put here from above in the first bullet point uh, suggesting that it's mostly or it can be done uh, uh, via remote sensing uh, and that's becoming less of a sharp dichotomy. Be Ten years ago probably it was easier to quantify deforestation than reforestation but now that line is blurring more or less as, as time goes by. However, even if we have you know, very sophisticated remote sensing tools, uh, reforestation, restoration starts on the ground and somebody's gonna do it. Uh, and you can uh, plant seeds via uh, aerial seeding with a drone, but that's pretty, pretty much the exception. So local involvement, it, it's critical and local decision-making is critical in, in making uh, any activity on forest landscape restoration a success. So in order to, to find out how your restoration activity is faring, uh, you need to some extent to involve and to learn what's going on at the local level. If you don't know that uh, and if there's failure, you may not know exactly why it failed or the other way around. If it's succeeding, you may want to know why exactly it's succeeding and the local involvement, it's, it's critical in that regard. And uh, there are major political commitments on restoring integrated areas worldwide, the Bond Challenge. In Latin America, we have Initiative 20 by 20. And uh, these have been a significant driver of political commitment uh, to that end. But uh, this is a top-down uh, uh, approach, which is completely valid. But again, we need to connect both the local and the global. And in this table, I'm just putting things in context. Uh, if you go to the upper uh, row, uh, the light green in your screen, uh, you have what we could call a, a completely top-down approach in which, you know, the objectives of the restoration uh, activity are externally driven and professionally executed. And if you go all the way to the bottom, you have autonomous local monitoring, meaning, meaning that probably a local community uh, wants to monitor the, the status of uh, wildlife. And there are cases in which you can uh, uh, assess or, or uh, identify uh, in some instances that uh, that has happened in, in terms of natural resources. Uh, we have we are interested in the in the middle line, uh, the orange one, which involves a top-down decision, a top-down um, commitment. Can be global, can be national, can be municipal, and then you involve a different set of stakeholders that will serve uh, both ends. Uh, data gatherers are uh, local people with professional researcher advice uh, and the primary source of data are both prof local people and professional researchers who ultimately can uh, transmit that information to a higher level jurisdictional or in the case of uh, major commitments such as the uh, IG targets of the CBD or the bond challenge, it can be uh, upscaled. So upscaling is a, it's a critical term in this presentation. How do you really connect efficiently and effectively 
the local activities with the national activities and ultimately with the global commitments so that countries can report in a meaningful way again why a given restoration activity has succeeded or not not necessarily quantifying numbers of hectares of or tons of carbons but giving uh, uh, further insight as to why uh, a given restoration activity be active or passive is uh, uh, fulfilling its objectives so in this slide uh, what i'm trying to show is one approach that is a uh, top-down approach, if you will, this corresponds to the bond challenge. The bond challenge led by IUCN and WRI and other organizations uh, set the stage for countries to pledge uh, ambitious commitments to restore degraded land. And what you have, the way uh, the bond barometer, that's, which is uh, the, the tool that IUCN uh, is developing, it's basically to report on progress. Uh, and if you look at the bottom, opportunities to implement forest landscape restoration and achieve area on the restoration targets for bond challenge identified. So what we're looking here, it's a single uh, indicator, which is completely valid, but we don't know again whether uh, the area that was pledged was reached. Uh, it could be because of lack of germplasm or maybe a, a given country achieved that area under restoration that was pledged years ago but we would like to know exactly how it fared and again the local involvement is critical so in essence what this slide tries to show is that the, the arrows go all the way from the top to the bottom but doesn't seem to have a feedback loop and that's exactly what we are trying to uh, promote or at least implement in, in, in various countries. This is part of a C4 wide research approach to quantifying and linking national with local aspirations in the context of forest landscape restoration. So this is what we propose, a system uh, that connects global, local and national and that uh, provide feedback to each other. So as I mentioned uh, at the beginning, restoration starts on the ground. So you need to identify local questions and indicators. I'll come back to that later. Uh, develop and test methods. Define incentives. Determine the costs. In other words, you need to really uh, plan your project uh, with a very, very local uh, uh, view and with a local with a high level of local involvement and the last bullet under the local box says promote adaptive management this is key and that's exactly at the heart of social learning adaptive management uh, is, is an approach that allows either managers and the uh, implementers and the local people who are going to benefit uh, to find out uh, with appropriate design and appropriate uh, feedback loops how uh, your activity is faring if there are trigger points, in other words, after two years, if there's uh, a pest outbreak in your plantation or if things are not working really well, uh, well to really find out how exactly you're going to measure an early warning system or how going to design an early warning system. Then you have a national level where you, you know, this is basically uh, pertaining to uh, national authorities or uh, uh, ministries. And there are activities that need to be done in order to also link the local and the national. Uh, data storage is critical. Uh, a centralized uh, system that can uh, link uh, provincial, local with national uh, data sets in most cases is lacking. You need to develop training capacity. Uh, that's not necessarily the role of local communities. Some, you, know, you need a higher level of authority or, or a higher level of uh, resource uh, capacity to, to do that, uh, monitoring budgets, uh, and build subnational networks for upscaling. These are a few of the elements that are uh, essential at the, national, uh, at the national scale. And at the global, as, as I mentioned before, you have the bond barometer, which is perhaps an attempt to unify uh, bond challenge commitments and 
you need to identify global questions and indicators. And this is a very high uh, uh, level of information, but the point is that these need to be linked one way or the other, the local, the national, and the global. And the arrows that you see between the boxes, uh, what it suggests is that it's an iterative process and it's a learning process. And you cannot have uh, either a, an arrow that comes from the top to the bottom or the other way around. So the key messages that I'll be presenting uh, from now on derive from the publication you see on the right hand of the slide. Uh, and this was uh, published about a year and a half ago. It's freely downloadable from the C4 website. Uh, and, and if you uh, just write down the name, success from the ground up, uh, go to the C4 uh, website, uh, c4.org, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can access it freely. And it's also a Spanish version. So the, the key messages of this review uh, are as follows, that as I uh, had mentioned before, local involvement is necessary for long-term restoration success. It is, it's, it's almost axiomatic uh, in a way. Creates sense of ownership, buy-in and trust. Increases the speed and effectiveness of local decision-making that has been proven in other set of reviews and uh, catalyzes social learning and adaptive management. I should mention that the publication uh, contains uh, plenty of case studies and plenty of references. Uh, uh, so I uh, encourage you to, to take a look at it. Uh, and I'm sure that one way or the other, it'll help uh, your activities uh, uh, in the context of foreign landscape restoration. I hope so. Uh, another set of lessons learned from our review is that local monitors, and by monitors we, we mean people who, who do the measurements and, and, and make decisions, can provide re reliable data with appropriate training, motivation, and cross-checking. Uh, so it's been proven that uh, local uh, measuring and, 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 and local uh, uh, assessment of restoration activities uh, are, are doable uh, and can be cost-effective but it requires an initial investment. And this is uh, largely the role of the government or, or uh, non-governmental organizations. It's not, it's not gonna happen uh, spontaneously. You need to invest and, and that needs to be taken into account. 